Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. As we all know that there are many joints which are provided in buildings like construction joint, contraction joint and expansion joint. So in this video, we are going to discuss about expansion joint, why we need to provide the expansion joint and under which condition we need to provide expansion joint in buildings and what are all the materials used in expansion joint and how do we calculate the expansion joint width. So these are all let's discuss in detail in this video. So without delay let's begin now first let's see what is an expansion joint it is the joint which is provided to separate the building unit into two segments as you can see here the building will be in a single unit so in between the unit we need to provide somewhere we need to provide the expansion joint and that joint divide the single unit of the building into two segments so here there is a joint is going on you can see so this is dividing the single unit into two segments this expansion joint is an isolation joint provided within a building to permit the separate segments of the structural frame to expand and contract in response to temperature changes without adversely affecting the building structural integrity or serviceability. This also helps to reduce the crack due to thermal variation. So due to the thermal variation or temperature changes, the building may tend to expand or contract on its own face. So to avoid that one, we need to provide this expansion joint in buildings. Also, this expansion joint allowed the movement due to temperature, moisture and seismic forces. The term joint ensure the separation between adjacent members to allow one member to move independently to the other. So, due to this joint, the two part of the building, that is the two segments are allowed to move independently. Now, let's discuss what is the need of this expansion joint. The structure cannot be constructed as a monolithic unit. As we have discussed before, the long structure, the long unit, the building unit cannot be constructed as a monolithic unit. We need to provide expansion joint in between the unit to allow the movement due to temperature and moisture effect. Also, it is provided to relieve the stresses and increase the serviceability of the building and this expansion joint helps to prevent the transformation of earthquake vibration. So when the earthquake occurs, if the building is in a two segments, have the tendency to move back and forth. So that is called as a pounding effect. So this expansion joint helps to reduce the transformation of earthquake vibration. So we know we need to provide expansion joint in buildings, but when to provide the expansion joint, what is the condition and at up to what distance we need to provide the expansion joint. When the length of the building exceeds 45 meter, we can say it is a larger building or length of the building is more. So up to what length we need to provide the expansion joint. So if the length of the building exceeds 45 meter, then we need to provide the expansion joint which is given in IS 456-2000 class number 27.2 the details as to the length of a structure where expansion joint have to be provided can be determined after taking into consideration of various factors such as temperature, exposure to weather, the time and season of laying of concrete etc. Normally the structures exceeding 45 meter in length or designed with one or more expansion joint so this is the condition which is given in is 456 2000 so when the length of the building exceeds 45 meter we need to provide the expansion joint generally in building construction an expansion joint is a mid structure separation so this expansion joint separate the structure into two parts so it must be designed in order to allow the displacement between both sides of the slab. This expansion joint bisects the building element and are designed to safely absorb thermal expansion and contraction and to relieve stresses due to wind and seismic effects. Since this expansion joint bisects the structure into two, it creates a gap and this must be filled to restore the functions of buildings such as sound and waterproof. The structure adjacent to the joint shall be preferably be supported on separate columns or walls. This expansion joint should be completely clear and reinforcement shall not extend across expansion joint. So completely it has to be a separate structure 
so there should not be any extension of reinforcement across expansion joint next let's look into the materials which is used in expansion joint first one is asphalt asphalt is a durable and flexible material create a permanent waterproof sealing and thus results in a good expansion joint material so since it is a waterproof material it will act as a good expansion joint material next one is fiber fiber is versatile and non extruding and flexible material next one is ceramic ceramic is a lightweight material highly flexible and it is composed of isomeric polymers next one is sponge rubber as the name says it is easily compressible material and act as a good expansion joint material last one is cork it has very good expansion properties it can extend up to 140% of its original thickness and can compensate for concrete shrinkage now let's see how do we find out the expansion joint width the thickness of expansion joint mainly considered by thermal consideration second one is story diff requirement during earthquake effect so these two things we need to consider and we need to calculate according to these two conditions and then we need to choose the critical one among these two calculation first let's calculate the expansion joint width by thermal consideration gap needed for expansion joint of both portions are equal to 2 multiplied by a multiplied by l by 2 multiplied by t here a is the thermal coefficient of concrete which is 10 to 14 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 per degree celsius d is the temperature variation let's consider 34 degree l is the length of the building portion between joints so l is the length of the building portion so one portion of the length we need to consider let's consider maximum as 45 meter if the length of the building exceeds 45 meter then we need to provide the expansion joint so let's consider the maximum here so expansion gap is equal to 2 multiplied by a is the thermal coefficient of concrete multiplied by 45 by 2 multiplied by 34 so if we calculate this we get 18 mm generally we provide 25 mm or 40 mm or 50 mm so here let's consider 25 mm as the expansion joint width for thermal consideration next one is storage drift requirement during earthquake so as per is 1893 2016 there is a class 7.11.3 separation between adjacent unit two adjacent buildings or two adjacent units of the same building with separation joint between them shall be separated by a distance equal to r times sum of story displacement calculated as per 7.11.1 of the two buildings or two unit of the same building to avoid pounding as the two buildings or two unit of the same building oscillate oscillate towards each other so this is the main effect pounding effect of two unit when the earthquake force is acting on them so to avoid this pounding effect expansion joints has to be provided so how do we calculate that one by using the story displacement story displacement has to be calculated as per class 7.11.1 delta 1 and delta 2 are the story displacements of building 1 and building 2 or segment 1 or segment 2 when floor levels of the adjacent unit of building or buildings are at the same level the separation distance separation joint or expansion joint distance shall be calculated as r1 delta 1 plus r2 delta 2 r times the sum of story displacement that is r1 delta 1 plus r2 delta 2 where r1 and delta 1 correspond to building 1 and r2 and delta 2 corresponding to building 2 here r1 and r2 are the response reduction factors and delta 1 delta 2 are the displacement story displacements so according to this we need to calculate the expansion joint width and then among the two values as per thermal consideration and as per this uh, story drift among these two value which one is critical that one we need to consider as a expansion joint width now let me show you the expansion joint in drawing so here we have the plan let me show you the total length of the building So here the total length of the building is 80,000 mm. Here the dimension is in mm, 80,000 mm that is 80 meter. So which is more than 45 meter. So as per IS 456 2000, 
when the length of the building exceeds 45 meter we need to provide the expansion joint so if we divide the building into two parts that comes around somewhere middle of here let me draw the line and let's take the dimension of mid mid portion so if we take out the mid portion it is coming around 40 meter see it should not exceed 45 meter so at this place we can provide the expansion joint at this place we can provide the expansion joint and just circling this to show you this place we can provide the expansion joint but the problem is when we arrange the column here there is no column so at this place we cannot provide the expansion joint here there is a column but it is coming in the middle of the room there is no walls provided here so that is why I have shifted the expansion joint to this area let me measure the dimension and show you so it is provided 35.65 meter 35 meter is the distance and again here let's measure from this joint till the end of the building it is coming around 44 meter it is not exceeding the caudal provision which is 45 meter so in this way you need to provide the expansion joint in buildings so friends i hope you all like this video please do comment in the comment box your comments are always welcome and also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos if you really like the content if you want to support this channel super thanks button has been enabled in our channel you can uh, log into in your uh, email account and then below this video super thanks button will be shown so you can click on that and pay some amount and, and support this channel thank you for watching